All right, and welcome to another ish edition of MASH Talk Live, Mashable's Google Talk Hangout. I am Christina Warren, Mashable Senior Tech Analyst, and I'm joined today by uh, Pete Patchell, our tech editor, who is meerkatting away. Hello on Google and Meerkat. Hey, Meerkat. What's going What's on? What's up? And I'm also joined by J.P. Mangalan, who is our C uh, tech reporter in San Francisco. What's up, J.P.? Hey, Christina. So today we are, um, as you might have guessed from, from the topic, and, and if you were just one of the people who was watching us as we were meerkatting live, we are talking about South by Southwest, and we can't talk about this year's South by Southwest Interactive without talking about one thing and one thing only, and that would be Meerkat. Meerkat, which is, of course, the, the social app, which is um, allows you to do live video streams directly from your phone. You can then share them with users all over the place. Users can restream and comment in real time. Um, it's kind of a mashup of, of you know, like older services like Ustream, newer services like Snapchat, um, with a little mix of Twitter and Tumblr uh, baked in, all live, brand new, um, and it, it's it's been super popular and super fun, kind of taking things over by storm, and almost every year at South by Southwest, you know, starting with when Twitter launched in 2007, there's been one or two apps that kind of take over and they kind of become like the story of South by, like this is the app that won South by. You know, Foursquare famously debuted in 2009, and you know, there was the year where there was like the highlight and the banjo and all those apps, there was the year where we had all the group messengers facing off, and uh, some have succeeded, some have failed, but this year all the talk was definitely about Meerkat. So, uh, JP, I'm going to throw it to you first, um, since uh, you've written about Meerkat and, and, and talked to their CEO some, and I know that Pete has as well. We're hoping that Ben Rubin will be able to join us in the hangout later on. If he's not able to, that's okay. We'll, we'll make do without him. But, uh, but JP, just give us a little bit of a background about uh, how Meerkat came about and, and maybe give us, walk us through the timeline of, you know, going from obscurity to this, the fact that we've got an entire hangout dedicated to it. It's pretty impressive. I mean, it, it's a very, we talk about timeline, it's a very short timeline. The app launched February 27, which is I mean, my math might be a little bit off, but less than three weeks, barely three weeks. Yep. Um, and in that time, you know, Ben Rubin has said that there are at least over 100,000, I think there's at least over 150,000 users, and a lot of those users include some pretty high-profile folks like Tony Hawk, the, scare, the skateboarder, um, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon. This week. Yep. Um, so a bunch of high-profile tech folks. Mashable, um, Pete Cashmore is all over it. Pete was on it. We're on it, obviously. Um, Clearly, and, you know. And Ben is this, you know, it's a pretty, Ben is his first time entrepreneur from Israel. He's a former architecture student who switched gears to focus on um, what eventually became Meerkat. And Meerkat was like several months in the making. Um, you know, as I said earlier, it launched February 27. So it's just going really, really rapidly. Like even someone like the skeptic in me has to appreciate and admit that they're probably onto something here. Um, like we're literally on it, yeah. <laughs> no, totally. So no, you're right. So it's been in three weeks. You know, it's gone from basically first time entrepreneur to come out of the gate with something like this. That to me, and I'm with you, JP. I'm a little more skeptical, but I have to give him props for that because that's really, really impressive to be a first time entrepreneur. And to come out with something that that is even a mass, I think you know. Last time Lance talked to, to Ben, I think yesterday he said 160,000 registered users, which is obviously um, not a huge number, but but not bad at all, especially uh, for for a new startup. Um, Pete, why don't you talk us talk to us a little bit about how it was being used at South by, and also talk a little bit about uh, the the kerfuffle that Meerkat has gotten into with Twitter for people who might not have the background. Sure. So I, um, from what I saw at South by. Everybody was talking about Meerkat, and quite a few people were, were using it, uh, including us. So um, in terms of, like, uh, how people were using it, honestly, it was a complete lab, a Meerkat lab, South by Wise. I mean, people were Meerkatting, people were Meerkatting, and people Meerkatting. People were trying <laughs> to do sort of elaborate things with, like, triple Meerkats sort of aimed at each other. Um, it was kind of, you know, it would make your brain hurt on some of this stuff. Um, some people were doing, as, as we sort of figured out, sort of the accessories, so you get, like, you know, a selfie stick, uh, you rapidly realize, oh, well, I need more battery, and sort of figuring these things out as they went along. <clears throat> um, you know, in terms of, like, sharing, the stuff type, type of stuff they were doing, I think the main thing people really liked was kind of a little bit of behind-the-scenes access to something that was happening right now, and I think this is part of Meerkat's appeal. It's sort of like, you know, Twitter on it already... Uh, to some extent, and you know, you're already kind of in your Twitter bubble when you're in Twitter because you're following who you want to follow, um, and it's particularly if you're in media or tech. 
Um, it's very much kind of a bubble for those things. So I think it's what a big part of its appeal is like you have this real time behind the scenes sort of access to to something that you're interested in, and this can equally apply to other you know bubbles, whether it's entertainment sure. or whatever. So um, you know, it's why we follow celebrities like. <laughs> the Kardashians. Just say it. You want to say the Kardashians. I'm thinking it. JP is definitely thinking it. Right. You don't want to talk about them. We all watch them. So explain to us real quick. Talk to me about what the what the kerfuffle with Twitter is. Give some people some background on that. Why why does Twitter hate Meerkat and why do they want it to fail? Well, I mean, you know, it has yet to be proven Twitter hates it, but I mean, I think yes. There's... Oh, they hate it. JP, they hate it, right? <laughs> See, I think no. it's a strong dislike. I think it's a strong, strong dislike. <laughs> But, okay, uh, just so I'm sorry, just like I, they hate it. I'm gonna say they hate it. Okay. Uh, we're meerkatting this as we talk right now, by the way. So people are hearing one half of my conversation. Uh, but he, go ahead and give us a little bit of a feedback about uh, what what's going on with Twitter and meerkat and why. As as JP just said, JP just said they they, they hate them. Yeah, well, what what happened is meerkat when <laughs> it basically um, piggybacked on Twitter's social graph. Now, what that means is it um, automatically sort of knew who you're following on Twitter and would auto-follow those people, and um, basically it, it would use your Twitter network to power its discovery engine. Now, this is something um, Twitter generally frowns on, you know, in the, it, for, for most apps. Uh, you, you know, they don't want you piggybacking on all sort of the hard work they've done to build up their network effect, you know, which uh, obviously has helped the, the, the service immensely. Um, but in Meerkat's case, it was definitely uh, you know, doubly... Uh, uh, bruising to them because they they have their own ideas about live video. They just purchased Periscope, which do, offers a similar service. So um, basically, they don't want Meerkat to offer a service that it's already planning on introducing and basically gobbling up um, all those eyeballs and all that potential monetization. Um, so that's yeah. kind of the source of what happened there. JP, do you have anything to add to that? I mean, you know, in in the bigger scheme of things, you know, you're absolutely right, Pete. You know, that being said, what they're doing is not exactly, it's not like unprecedented. We've seen like once a tech company like your Facebooks or LinkedIn's reach a certain level of scale and maturation, then they start to get a little more selfish, right? So they start to like close off their social, their API access or social graph access to outside apps and services they might view as competitive, and that's exactly what it looks like. It looks like that's what we're seeing here. And so this all comes down because uh, uh, Twitter already invested in a company called uh, Periscope, right? Mm -hmm. Basically, it's doing the same thing. Is that right, JP? Right. I think they acquired them for a reported, I don't know, $200 million. It's supposed to operate very similarly. That being said, I have not used it or seen it. But that's, yeah. Yeah. that's my they point. Acquired it. Ooh, they, they acquired it in January, right? Like, like yeah. Nobody knew who this thing is. It's, it's been kind of this private beta. Nobody knows anything about it. And then they come out of here, acquired, and now, uh, you know, Meerkat, I guess, is playing in their sandbox is a little too successful, and they're like, screw you guys. Is that right? Uh, basically. <laughs> <laughs> not, <laughs> and not so many words. I mean, I, I will say what I thought was interesting was, you know, at South By, um, so Ben Ruman did an interview the same weekend with another outlet, um, regrettably, that was not mashable, and he was basically expressing... Well, was, his, like, go, ahead, go ahead and say who the outlet was. It was Recode. And um, okay. he was, it was a, in a video, and he was basically, he was pretty frank. He was just saying how... Was it Kurt Wagner? Was it with that snake, Kurt, Wag Kurt Wagner? Who was yes. it with? Yes, yes, that very attractive snake, Kurt Wagner. And very attractive snake. He's very hot. We, we had, we'd have to say, we love you, too, Kurt, but yes. That, 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 uh, that Judas. Okay, so, so <laughs> what, what, did he say? What, did he, what did he say to Judas? Um, so he basically said... Um, Look, you know, uh, we had two two hours notice um, that Twitter was going to do this. They Twitter called uh, Ruben and, and Meerkat two hours before they cut off social graph access, and Ben was pretty, you know, really frustrated and unhappy about it. That was very obvious in the interview. And then just two days later, I think on Sunday, he interviews with David Pogue, who's now at Yahoo Tech, and he clearly cleaned up his message. He was much more upbeat. He was like, "Oh, we're partners. We're cooperative. You know, we're really happy to work with Twitter." And I was like, "I was like, okay, I'm not buying this. This is clearly, you know." You, Yes, this is completely yes. No, I think that's actually really funny, and it actually probably shows, you know, it would have been great if there had been a meerkat of the meerkat guy responding to, you know, what had happened when, when Twitter cut off their API access, because clearly, clearly it was very, very different scenario. 
when um, you know he talked to to to, to um, our uh, our Judas Kurt Wagner versus when he talked to uh, to David Pogue. Um, but no, I mean it has to it has to suck as a as a startup guy, especially for first time startup person who you have this thing out there, you're building on the social graph, you have this great way of, of you know building people's user lists. I mean I know that I had 1,800 followers before I even officially signed up, just by people people who follow me who had signed up, I guess beforehand, and then to you know lose that sort of integration and lose that sort of auto follow ability. Um, is definitely kind of a damper to building out the social graph. Do you think, JP, though, that that's something that they can overcome, um, where people will be able to will be willing to re-add their stuff in? And let me ask you a secondary question. Okay, so they can't have Twitter access. That's fine, but why not look at, at at adding in Facebook integration? Why not add in something like Tumblr integration, even Google integration? I mean, why why limit yourselves just to just to Twitter as your kind of social graph place? What do you think about that? You know, it's something that seems very logical, and it's something that was asked of Rubin on stage on on Sunday when with David Pogue. Um, that being said, you know, I think that's the thing that's concerning for me is, like as you alluded to, is the fact that they are their growth and engagement right now is primarily is fully dependent on Twitter to a large extent, unless they hear about it, you know, externally of Twitter. Because I start a live stream, it's uh, the tweet is pushed out to Twitter. It's not pushed out anywhere else, and that kind of reminds me of. And they're very different companies at very different stages in their lives. Wow. Something like your Zynga's of the world, right? Zynga's a game, yeah. gaming company, very, very different. But what was problematic for them, especially in those first few years, was they were completely wholly well. dependent on Facebook. And, and so they rode that wave. And from what I had heard was um, uh, Mark Pincus, their then CEO, was very complacent about you know, aggressive expansion and going onto other platforms, and it bit them in the butt um, years later. Because now they're just, they've imploded, they're trading at you know, a small fraction of what they used to. And so I think my th my concern is that, um, I don't know, if, if, if Ruben Estate is complacent with regards to expanding beyond Twitter, that's a problem. Um, that being said, you know, he doesn't seem really positive or um, bullish on Facebook expansion. You know, at a during his talk at South By, he said um, he thought live media... Uh, was kind of, Facebook was kind of irrelevant with regards to live media because you put something up on Facebook, like you share a post or a status update, just 12% of your Facebook friends will see that update during the first 24 hours. I don't know if that's true, but... I don't think it, that's true at all. It seems really kind of skewed. Um, I, yeah, I think, that's, I think you would like to believe that that's true. I think that that's completely false. What do you think about that, Pete? Well, I think it's like the fact that no, people don't see your live stuff in real time. I think that's... I think it, my feeling of the, the algorithm is that you, stuff that happened just now is kind of favorites, and then once it's like five minutes later, it's kind of in this pool of stuff, you know, and then it, it just kind of like, it might pop, it might not, but I, I, the, the stat you said, JP, definitely feels true. Um, yeah. the, um, but I think, I think it's absolutely true that Facebook kind of uh, made itself pretty irrelevant with live media. That was a conscious choice a few years back. I mean, who even looks at that um, thing in the top right now on our news feeds that sort of is supposedly sort of like the, the, the action feed or whatever that someone liked this or did that and it sort of refreshes all the time. I think that's, that's very much, it's almost like a display ad. Like, I mean, it's no, no one looks at it or even, even cares about it. Um, so, I mean, you know, that's the thing. I mean, Meerkat, I think, has has really um, jumped on this 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 need, really, for a, a live video. I mean, you know, Snapchat was kind of almost that because it was so person-to-person -person that um, there was this real-time quality to it, um, but is a broadcast kind of thing that already had, a, like, an instant um, sort of social graph. Um, Meerkat really just, you know, was really smart about it because, you know, obviously live video is nothing new, it's uh, just right. the way they've done it has been sort of the, the brilliance here. <clears throat> so, uh, so let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things that will be. You're not, you're so, not going to bring up chat roulette, are you? <laughs> no. Well, <laughs> I think we is, so, and, so, and I were talking about this on Meerkat before our hangout started. And unfortunately, Ben Rubin's not here to kind of answer this question. But for me, one of the immediate areas where I see this being obviously used, you know, you mentioned Snapchat, and Snapchat obviously was very famous in its early days for being used for sexting, frankly, right? Like, that's what people were using it for. And it seems to me like, you know, Snapchat has kind of clamped down on people using it for, you know, more um, 
sexy purposes. You know, they're, they're not letting people do the Snapchat payments uh, for news and cam girl and that sort of thing. But this, to me, seems like this would be, like, if I were running, like, a cam service or something like that, this would be something that would be a really easy way of getting a lot of viewers enticed to things and then maybe trying to funnel them through a paywall or something. How long do you think it will be, or have we already seen sexy meerkats? Uh, maybe people in meerkat can let us know. Have, have you guys seen, you know, the, the, the chat roulette... Um, the Dick Roulette sort of thing come to Meerkat yet? And JP, do you think this is something that they need to be concerned about now as it's growing, or do you think that uh, maybe I just have a dirty mind? Uh, I think a lot of us have dirty minds, Christina, so you're not alone. Um, <laughs> B, uh, I, I think sooner, being concerned sooner rather than later is always a good thing. Um, you know, and and C, you know, I. I yeah, absolutely. I, I, it's a totally easy, easy way to make that happen. And I would also say that Snapchat, I think, is still uh, very popular amongst the uh, the alleged stripper set. So, you know, <laughs> the I, think, I think it's it's definitely something they're, they're probably concerned about, and I'm sure they're they're all like trying to guard against that. But really, in the model that they have, I mean, think about it. How would that happen? I mean, you're only following who you follow on Twitter, basically. And so, I mean, you know, I follow a lot of people on Twitter. But, you know, I, I, I don't think, um, you know, Lance is going to start doing a, a sex show for that, I, you know, or I don't think even Arnold Schwarzenegger is or the celebrity. Oh, so, my God. I, mean, that's, I hope that's not. the worst thing I've ever done in my life, Pete. Lance, no, stop. <laughs> I love Lance. Put so that in your heads. It, you can't unthink it. Uh, no, I can't. That's terrible of you. Um, JP, I know you've got to get out of here. Do you have any final thoughts real quick? Well, just if you wanted to do that as a model, if you were the, like one of these cam services, how would you even do it on Meerkat? I mean, I can't even think well, of a way. There are always ways to be Bitcoin, all kinds of things. But JP, I know you're about to leave us. Um, yeah. Any final thoughts on, on, on Meerkat? I mean, I think there are definite revenue uh, possibilities there. I mean, e even just three weeks in, I think Ruben dropped some high-profile examples of big companies that are using um, Meerkat. And I don't, they're probably not paid, but um, they seem promising. Like <laughs> Red Bull used it for some ice skating broadcasts, which I'm not quite sure that's a natural synergy, but somehow it is. Um, and then and then another sports team, and I'm not into sports, so I don't remember their name, sorry. Sports team, uh, Miami Dolphins, they used them to broadcast. I think, yeah, they, brought, they used Meerkat to broadcast a game. That being said, those are probably free broadcasts, but maybe somewhere down the line those, those could be sponsored somehow. I think that's a great point. That's a great point. And JP, I know you got to get out of here. Um, uh, go off to your interview, kick ass, take names, and um, maybe you can meerkat uh, with your interview subject. That would be cool too. Pete and I are going to continue talking. Uh, thanks so much, JP. Pete and I are going to continue guys. talking. Bye, bye, JP. Pete bye. and I are going to continue Thank talking. For um, so, so Pete, I want to I want to ask you. You know, we were talking about this a little bit in our meerkat session before we actually like started like hardcore with the meerkatting, um, and uh, we were talking about, like, I was asking you, like, how is this different from Quick, how is this different from Justin TV, from Ustream, and whatnot, and I thought you made a really good point about how the timing is different. You want to expand on that a little bit more? Yeah, I think meerkat has, I'm sort of, like, doing a weird hangout here, because I want the meerkat crowd to get a good effect here, so I've got to put myself up. Uh, okay, so, the, I think meerkat is capitalizing on a bunch of trends right now, and um, uh, the main ones... Uh, are, you know, it, it's basically all about timing. This is a great time for live video, social live video. And one, it's, it's, it's uh, got a few pillars. Like there's Snapchat, which has made people more and more comfortable with sharing, uh, not just sexting, although, you know, that's obviously... <laughs> that's part of it. But it's, it's really like the behind-the-scenes nature of stuff, and not even just, like, big profile stuff, like behind-the-scenes stuff of your life. Like, here's, you know, what I do to make a frickin' salad, I don't know, whatever, whatever people are meerkatting. Um, so oh my god, oh my god, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but you just mentioned <laughs> something, this would be amazing. The, the guy who did the Kickstarter potato salad, oh, wow. if he'd been able to meerkat that, like seriously, like, mind blown. Okay, okay. sorry, go on, continue. But, kind of but that kind of thing, so that, that kind of comfortability that people have with it. Um, there's also the trend of minimalist app design, um, which they got dead on right. Uh, it's just, here's the stream, tweet it out, even when you're in it, you know, like right now I'm meerkatting, I'm seeing my uh, comments come in, I can respond to them, um, you know, all the buttons are fairly obvious, you know, whereas Snapchat, I honestly think some of the buttons I, I still haven't figured out. Um, so there's that. Uh, obviously the technology um, uh, is here, like, you know, transmitting live video, you know, now that we have LTE and it's sort of fully formed, 
that's not a problem anymore. The fact that it's only mobile, that it's very mobile-centric, makes a ton of sense. And, you know, I think any service today has to do that. But for, for this kind of social aspect, you know, with everyone's phones in their pocket now becoming this thing you can tune into any of your friends doing whatever at any time, um, that's huge. So there's all these kind of uh, factors that are sort of bubbling up that uh, basically Meerkat, you know, sort of uh, either brilliantly or by chance, took advantage of all of them. Um, and, you know, now that it's kind of uh, established itself as kind of the thing, uh, we're certainly going to see a ton of copyhead apps. Um, yeah. And uh, as we were talking, talking about earlier, the big thing that's missing, I think, now is to sort of tune in to what someone was broadcasting before. So right. you know, not everyone can catch stuff uh, as it's happening. And that, that's one of the things Pete... Uh, found when he was meerkatting at South by when um, you constantly have to sort of remind people like what you're doing you kind of like oh and for the net for the most recent 50 or 100 viewers who just came in this is what we're doing it's like you just assume people uh, you know are constantly joining um, yeah. so it's one of those things uh, where there's just kind of a lot of like people are sort of, sort of still figuring out the best practices although they're, they're rapidly emerging but one if they if some competitive competing service can add the on-demand stuff, and something like you know a big player like Twitter could. That could be sort of an issue because you know um, right. You're kind of well, you? established itself as the leader, but it's not firmly established itself. It's it's got to keep right. pushing now with the momentum, or it, it could fade to irrelevance. In the, in no, the you're absolutely right. <clears throat> but people want to okay. do. This. I want to be clear. People do want to do this, and that's why I think Meerkat is here to stay, and because it, it's doing it, and it's doing it in a very smart way. But I don't think broadcasting live video is going to go away. Uh, it's basically it could be usurped by someone with a much better product, even though this product's already pretty good. Yeah, no, so it's actually funny. We're doing kind of a roll call um, in, in uh, the Meerkat chat right now, and somebody's saying that our conversation is more interesting than the video. Uh, you're not wrong, you guys. You are correct. Your conversation no. on Meerkat is more interesting than our Hangout, but we do appreciate you being in our Hangout, so thank you. Um, but um, people are, are joining us from all over the world. We've got people from Amsterdam, the Czech Republic, China, um, uh, Brazil, Belize, all yeah. over the world. Yeah, so head seen, exactly, Christina. <laughs> And they're just having such a good conversation. Let's bring it here. What are they saying? Yeah, no, that's what they're saying. They're basically just talking about where they are. And people are asking if it works under 3G. Um, uh, Pete Cashmore is in the chat talking with people. So obviously we have a celebrity in our mix now, you guys. And we have a Mr. Pete Cashmore. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Number one. Number one, your catter. You're absolutely right. Um, but here's, here's, this is interesting. So it's working in China, and, and uh, so obviously China hasn't banned it yet, which means it hasn't gained that much traction. Uh, but this actually opens up one thing that, I, that I've kind of, I'm with you. I think that live video streaming is here to say, I don't know if Meerkat's going to be the winner or not. I think it's way too early for me to make that prognostication. Um, just for the fun of this, you can be pro, I'll be con. Um, but I do think that this has a lot of very real implications right now, especially with the ease of how easy it is to do this for people doing kind of live reporting and, and live recording of things happening on the ground, and also a way for people in other countries to share news. What do you think about some of maybe the, the social uses outside of just, you know, uh, sexting or, or, or talking, you know, with Mashable people um, in, uh, you know, just from, from, a social, from a social good perspective? What do you think about the, the uh, potential, um, you know, from your cat that way? Because you kind of think, like, this could have kind of an Arab Spring-like moment, or for, or for things like Ferguson even, like, this could be yeah. a really good way of kind of bringing people together. What do you think? Well, yeah, that's right where my mind went. I mean, yeah, with journalism, and particularly citizen journalism, uh, I think Meerkat's going to be a big factor. Um, again, it's, it's part of that, though, isn't, isn't just the, the ephemerality of it um, can be a problem. So if, um, you know, your videos just go away or they're only on your phone once you're done, um, that can be a problem because right now you can't really embed Meerkats. Um, that's a very valuable thing when you're looking to either break news or provide some kind of record that something went on. Um, that said... On um, the um, converse, though, isn't right. it also good that it maybe doesn't exist because maybe you want to have a meeting and you don't want it recorded? Yeah, I, I, you know, and there's other ways you... If, if you do want to record, there's other things you can do as well. And um, um, But the, that is sort of the flip side of this, is that um, increase in sort of transparency, which can lead to inadvertent things. You know, like I was actually thinking about meerkatting one of our um, news meetings the other day um, because it was there was a weird meta moment where uh, you know there was a company and we were using the company's equipment. But 
I decided against it just because, you know, lots of things get discussed in our news meetings and not that, you know, people don't know what the news is and, and what we're probably covering, but, you know, you just, um, you, you just kind of want to be a little safer about things like that. Now, that's going to be, I, I'm sure we're going to find pretty soon, like, it's going to happen if it hasn't already, the first very awkward um, <laughs> revelation, something happened right. to Meerkat inadvertently, like, hey, if you watched the Meerkat and you saw did a screen cap, oh, look what happened, what this guy was doing at the time. So, you know, I mean, that's kind of what happens on all these networks to some extent. Right. Uh, Meerkat just opens it up to be a little more real time. Um, but, I mean, in terms of creative uses of Meerkat, I mean, you know, it's it's like you can, like, whenever there's something that is, you, like, when, when you just need to go live, <laughs> in whatever it may be. So, you know, I think... You, when when there's uh, something like a sports event, um, anything like like the Oscars, anything big where there is some kind of live, but not necessarily the, the cameras aren't already here, you know. So that's why I think you know right now it feels like it's always behind the scenes, um, and you know there might be stuff that sort of goes beyond that. Um, but um, as as we were saying sort of before the hangout. The uh, I think the potential market for people coming up with actual hardware to sort of creatively use Meerkat is is just starting. I mean, you know, this is going to be have the the live the effect of live video on a on mobile um, is going to sort of spark whole kind of uh, not just software but but hardware. So you're going to have these rigs for iPhones and Android phones that are specifically all about live video. Those already exist in a tiny market. But, I mean, Meerkat's just going to explode it. Yeah, no, I think you're right. I mean, you know, there was an article yesterday where somebody basically made the um, prognostication that the 2016 election will be the Meerkat or something like it election. And, you know, what? I think that's actually pretty accurate. I think that, that these sorts of tools are going to be increasingly used in really creative ways, and I think the, the election is going to be one of them. I actually just by myself thought of kind of a creative way to use Meerkat. I, don't, I want to know what people uh, in our, our Meerkat chat think. Um, so uh, cheating on tests. Imagine like using Meerkat like while you're taking a test like in your third grade class, and then somebody else is able to just watch it and, and record or or uh, or take down the notes for later. I mean, that could totally revolutionize the way that we cheat, don't you think? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, totally. I mean, it's like like I say. Um, yeah, I'm kind of trying to figure out like ways this could work. I mean, you know, when you when you do a test, I mean, you know, there's rules about phones and stuff. So I mean, a lot of this stuff is tough, but I would love to see, and I was talking about this because our, um, uh, who was it, Brian Reese, who is our uh, real-time news editor, runs our Twitter feed. He's actually on vacation this week in Vail, and he was meerkatting from the slopes. And he, he's obviously a very good skier because he was able to hold his phone in front of him uh, while skiing through trees uh, at Vail and somehow not get distracted and kill himself. So. Um, way to go, Brian, number one. Uh, also, you know, they, someone's got to build GoPro in, integration of this. And I, I find it very ironic that Google Glass basically was killed off um, right before this happened because this is the perfect app for Google Glass. It's kind of the nightmare app for Google Glass in some ways. It is. It's also... It's like very life. I don't think we can handle it. But this is, like, this could have been Google Glass's killer app, frankly. Yeah, well, absolutely, and um, you know, live stream did exist for Google Glass, and live stream again yeah. exists on mobile and exists on a lot of things. But I mean, to to pair it one with the simple interface and the social graph and sort of the fun nature somehow that's inherent uh, with Meerkat, um, you know, I mean, it's just fun to say, <laughs> like I'm Meerkatting. This is uh, it's kind of like one of the reasons I don't think Periscope will be quite as popular. I'm Periscoping. I mean, that almost sounds right. like you're doing something dirty, you know? I mean, like so. Um, but I'm meerkatting. I mean, you know, that's it's just a fun thing to say. It's a cool little logo. Uh, it sort of epitomizes the the whole fun of the service. But um, yeah, like wearable cameras plus meerkat is kind of where this has to go and soon. Yeah, no, I agree with you. So we actually have some great questions in the Google Plus Hangout. Um, so I'm going to ask um, some of these and, and bring these up. So um, uh, Gardner von Holt, he actually brings up a good point. 
where he says that several people have identified that people are more taken with Meerkat in part because they know they're not being recorded. So saving the video might kill some of the buzz. Um, and we kind of talked a little bit about that, but I think that's worth repeating. I think that, although I agree with you, Pete, that they're going to have to go to that kind of saving and service nature to, to be able to re-share um, things that, that are important, I think that the ephemeral nature of this is part of what makes Snapchat so popular. The fact that you kind of have to be part of it live. And if you're not part of it live, um, it's you know it didn't really happen. Um, so I think that that's that's a good point. Um, someone else has a question. Um, Portable. They're what, what is on your phone. Yeah. You can save them. You can save them. Put them in another video player. Yeah, and it's, it's a it's sure, an extra. Sure. So they're not they're obviously right. not against it. No, of course, of course, but I think that just the idea that in general it's not one of those things where it's automatically being saved yeah. that, you know, you've got to, there's an extra step involved. Um, but someone um, is, is asking, you know, uh, Poppy07024 is asking, um, will journalists be open to connecting with PR professionals for media interviews and briefings via Meerkat? Um, that's actually a pretty interesting question. Would you be willing to do like a, a product briefing over Meerkat to kind of do that open, that openly? I, I'm going to be honest, I think it would depend on the product, but I, I'm, I'm very... I'm personally all about transparency and letting people kind of know what's happening with me and, and being transparent about the process, but at the same time, I don't necessarily know if I would want to be broadcasting my meeting with, with PR people, especially if, if certain things are under embargo or, you know, you don't, they're, they're just, there's certain things that maybe you wouldn't want to share. What do you think about that, Pete? Would you be willing to do a meeting over Meerkat? I would love to do a Meerkat for something public, like a, if I've got a, like a hands-on session, and I think I probably will as long as, you know, um, whoever I'm meeting with is okay with it. Um, but, you know, yeah, the way it's set up now, it just wouldn't work because it's done over Twitter. It's very public. I don't think there is a private Meerkat function. Um, so there's certainly other video services. Uh, but honestly, you know, the Meerkat, um, I don't think it's really for that, you know, because when I, I want a hands-on, I actually want my hands on it. Now, for right. a briefing, that's fine, but there's a lot of tools that would work for that. You know, you could do a Skype or whatever, you know, I mean, which I've done. Um, so, you know, it might not be the best use for that, um, unless, although I have done a couple of sessions that didn't really work very well on mobile, because obviously a lot of these conference things, like WebExes or whatever, are terrible on mobile. Um, right. And you're a very quick way for anyone to just get going and broadcasting live. So if, if that could be arranged for a time when I'm not near a computer, that would be that would be preferable. It's kind of it's almost like a backup. Your backup, um, uh, you know, conference thing when all else fails, just do a meerkat and boom. You know, a yeah, lot no, of I think kind of got their start that way. I remember Dropbox. We started using mm -hmm. Dropbox at a job of mine. You know, way before. Oh wow, God, two thousand nine or so, mm -hmm. and um, it was uh, it was just because it worked. You know, it, like we had an FTP system or server, and then we just like, God, just let's use Dropbox. Um, so, you know, I, I think a lot of people think these, you know, these, all those Cisco WebExes do a great job when they work, and they're hard to get going and manage. So if you were just, dude, dude let's just meerkat it. You know, I mean, <laughs> I can see that being a thing that some startup-y place does who maybe doesn't have the resources of a full PR firm. That could be, that could be kind of cool. That could be cool. Um, so um, actually, so William um, uh, Grader in, in the chat, he has a couple of comments. He says, one, he says, you know, I, I can't see the advantage of doing a Meerkat feed from our um, from our webcasts when we already currently are tweeting the link to the webcast. And he also says, we do a ton of webcasts here, and today my VP asked me, what's the deal with this Meerkat? Should we do a feed of our webcasts on Meerkat? You know, William, I think it kind of depends. I think right now there's a novelty aspect to it, so you can definitely get more attention. I mean, we've got, you know, 365 people watching our Meerkat of our Hangout, probably more people watching that than are actually watching our Hangout Live. I'm not really sure of the numbers. So I think that, that there's a certain amount of novelty um, to jumping on it right now. I think that if you're already doing streamed content, it's sort of weird to watch a stream of a stream. There's a meta aspect to it, but it, it's going to get kind of old. But the one good thing I would say that you have about this that you might not have on your web platform, and it really just depends. And this is something that, you know, I, I've done podcasts for years. And it's been one of those things you kind of struggle with where a lot of times you want to, if you do a live show, you want the audience to be able to participate. And the challenge there is you usually have to create like an IRC server or have some sort of separate chat client running, and that's how people are able to interact. You know, Google Plus with Hangouts is a little bit easier, but even then, you know, you're sort of limited to the number of people who can kind of comment. And so one thing I think that actually is beneficial about Meerkat that I could see being used in conjunction 
with a webcasting system would be for the community to be able to be involved. Because as Pete said, you know, a lot of those platforms like WebEx and, and some of the GoToMeeting and some of those other things that traditionally do kind of let people do webinars and, and, and ask questions, they suck on mobile. And this is a great mobile experience. You can also do it on the web, but, but they, they primarily suck on mobile. So I could see the argument to make to your VP, maybe not so much for people to primarily get the content that way, but to be able to participate in the community aspect. What do you think, Pete? Yeah, I think it's good. It actually sort of dovetails with what, uh, one of my comments on my, on my Meerkat right now, which doesn't have 300 viewers, but, you know, it's doing okay. Another 28. Um, he says uh, Meerkat could revolutionize learning. Uh, yeah. yeah. Which I think is actually actually a really good comment. Uh, thanks, Robert Blake, or Roberto Blake. Thanks, Robert. uh, That's a really good comment. I'm not just cheating, so you guys. You can cheat, but you can also learn. <laughs> But yeah, if you think about it, I mean, especially in places, I mean, you know, this this is, you know, if you start expanding your head, it sort of dovetails with what Google and Facebook are trying to do to bring, um, you know, internet access to remote places, and even though one laptop per child didn't really work out so well, uh, one mm -hmm. cell phone per child, one smartphone with is much more realistic goal, and with uh, an app like Meerkat, as long as you have internet access, um, you know, you can not only tune into, you know, uh, a something to learn, some kind of educational broadcast. You can start one. Whatever. You know, where you know, wherever you are, if you're in the middle of Africa and you 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 know want to start reaching people um, and doing something teachable, um, you know, you can start doing that or showing what's going on. Um, so this, you know, it, to be able to do it in um, such an easy way to start these real time, you know, like here's what is happening now. I don't need to upload to YouTube. I don't need to, you know, do whatever and immediately um, just tell people what's going on. I mean, you know, like important things, educational things, whatever. I mean, it's it has the power for some social good here. Um, you know, again, it just all goes back down to like at some point, you know, you gotta you gotta be able to save the stream somewhere where it's not just on the phone. Because if you're doing, you know, if you're trying to show all the bad things, I don't know, Boko Haram is doing right now. Um, you know, hopefully, I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily use Meerkat for that right now, um, but it would probably be the quickest, simplest way to do it. Um, and you know, once people retweet whatever is going on, um, yeah, it'll be huge. Um, so, uh, you know, there's this could be a pretty big force for democracy if they can keep the momentum going. That's definitely true. Um, somebody's saying a, um, a, a soul shadow in, in our chat is saying it could be great for tech support. That's actually a really good point. I hadn't even thought of that, but this could actually be really good for tech yeah. support. Yeah, totally. Oh my god, I, I already like use FaceTime for tech support. Okay, like with my so, so why I use FaceTime. This could even be, be even better though. This is like Hololens, but without needing Hololens. It's also crowdsourcing it. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I mean, like crap, like the setting. Okay. You know, my boyfriend, husband, wife, girlfriend is busy. You know, or the person I go to, my friend who, who I usually go to. Well, here it is, Twitter. Show me how to do this, and it's like, boom. Like, I mean, that's actually not bad. I wonder if like um, real tech supports worried now that we've suggested. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Well, you know, Google's helpful Hangout things did not work, but this, again, because it's easy to use, because it's simple to sign up, because you don't have to go through a lot of the hoops, it could be better. Your people, your network, your Meerkat network will be your friends and people following you, and they kind of want to help you, you know? Um, and if they know it's a quick fix, boom, you know? Take a couple seconds, tune in the stream, tweet at the solution. Um, yeah. If it's complicated, start your own Meerkat. <laughs> and there you go. Uh, that's yeah, no. That's that, that's a really good point. So, um, actually, this is our friend Jeff Sinclair from uh, EventBase, uh, the creators of the South by Southwest Go app, is here, and he's interested in knowing what we thought about the thousand um, plus iBeacon deployment at South by Southwest this year. That was um, it was is uh, driving the around me feature and. Um, for hyperlocal attendees networking, I, I saw that when I was there, and that was pretty interesting. Um, I thought it was it was it was a good idea. Now here's here, but 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 kind of tying this back to Meerkat stuff. Um, a, I'd like to hear your thoughts, people. B, what do you think of this? You know, if not Meerkat, then a platform like it, being able to kind of have beacon aware stuff, so you can maybe have channels pushed to you if you were nearby something where you could kind of have a group of people sharing around a certain scenario. What 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 would you think about bringing something like that into play, adding kind of a geolocated? element to it, powered by iBeacons or, or, or something else. Here's what I'd say. It sounds great on paper. 
Um, because, all, I'm, you know, it's like, yeah, I'm walking around and I get this stuff pushed to me and, and beacons all sound good. I'll remind everyone of a little app called Color, which uh, <laughs> did something yes. extremely similar. Um, oh, what? Yes. And, and sort of tried to create these little micro communities. The problem with Color was that it was solely based around that and there was no sort of central vein. So, I mean, it could work for Meerkat with a service that's already got a purpose that is the primary purpose, and then this is added on as sort of an extra feature, um, sort of a la Foursquare and sort of getting deals when you're walking by stores or whatever, which is actually no longer the model, but I don't even know what they're doing anymore. <laughs> Tangent. But um, that could work, um, you know. But, I mean, you know, it kind of presumes people are really bored. <laughs> wherever they are, to, to sort of tune into some random broadcast that they were poked about. But, I mean, you know, like I say, if you if you program in your interests um, and, you know, you get tapped about stuff that's close by, I mean, I mean, it doesn't even have to be really close by, come to think of it, the nature of it. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if geolocation really is something people are looking for, unless it's something, someplace they actually want to go. So it's more like you kind right. of would have channels in Meerkat. And then, yeah, I've already pushed my my followers streams um, in Meerkat, uh, but or people I follow. But uh, you know, if you know if there's a science channel on Meer on Meerkat, and you're like, oh, there's a science project. Like, you know, that, that that's definitely a possible model. And um, you know, obviously, as content as a content platform, I mean, it's something they should think about. Um, yeah, we're supposed this to talk about that, I just suddenly reminded because you mentioned the beacon thing at South by. Yeah. Not that anything else was really going on at South by other than other than Meerkat as in turn on the scale. But uh, I honestly didn't encounter the beacons all that much. Um, to the extent that it they really worked well in the the South by app. Uh, yeah. Reminding me to where everything was. Um, but uh, you know, beacon wise, getting stuff pushed. Um, I, I heard that was going on, but I was there and I didn't really see it. I don't know. You were only there for like a a day, right? So. I was only there for a day. I did get I did get alerted of, of, as to my session as I was walking into my session, which was which was fun. The session that the panel that I was on, so that that worked. Um, but it was great to see them, you know, expanding that out more. Um, one fun Meerkat story. This is from Robert Wood in our Google Plus hangout. He says that Questlove Meerkatted part of his history of funk music class at NYU today, speaking um, of use. So talking about using it for learning, Questlove is already all over it. So uh, you know the roots. Jimmy Fallon's house band are on top of it, so that is awesome. Um, and uh, another thing, uh, another comment um, that uh, Lise Molina says, she says, hi, I'm participating in both, and she wanted to clarify something. She said, you know, you don't have to be a follower of the person on the hosting, hosting the Meerkat to watch the Meerkat session. And she wanted to add um, that the, the social justice, add to the social justice issue, that it's difficult to censor live feeds. And I think she makes a good point. You know, we're talking about all the good things happening with Meerkat, all the potential, and we're kind of laughing a little bit about some of the, you know, maybe some of the sexy times related stuff. Um, but uh, there is, you know, if there's some harassment issues or some other things that might need to be censored, this is, if it gets bigger, definitely going to be something that they're going to have to address a way to be able to quickly shut down streams if they get too many flags and, and they're going to have to have some sort of human component involved in being able to you know, figure out what is and what is not appropriate. Um, that opens up a whole a larger tale of, 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 you know, can of worms about, you know, what is and is not appropriate and who makes those decisions. But um, I think that there are interesting questions to be had, especially when we're talking about doing this sort of live broadcasting at this sort of level. And granted, that these aren't new questions to be raised. We've had them before with Ustream and Livestream and and just on TV and things like that, but um, I think that any time you bring it to a phone and you make it this easy, those issues become magnified just because the, as Pete was saying earlier, you know, the onboarding experience is so much better with something like this. Yeah, and it's gonna, it would be horrific to, um, to, to Meerkat's PR if, if like ISIS started Meerkatting stuff and they're very social media savvy. And I apologize if I've suddenly just given them the idea, but I'm sure they've thought of it. Um, oh, I'm sure they. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, you know, those things do, like you say, those things um, have come up in other live services. The virality of Meerkat kind of brings it to another level, though, because um, as as that person correctly pointed out, you can tune into them. You don't have to be following them to tune in. So what the danger is, is on Twitter, um, something bad going on gets retweeted a lot. Maybe something, you know, I mean, basically a lot of people start to tune in and then, um, it becomes something maybe not what you expected. So 
you know, it's it's we're gonna have to see what um, that kind of trolling slash harassment slash um, badness. <laughs> uh, forms on Meerkat as it grows because it will inevitably form um, and they'll just kind of have to sort of cross those bridges where they come to it. I, I, like I say, to some extent it's a little protected from that. It's not going to become chat roulette because of the follower followed nature of it at the start. Um, I don't think anyone's going to retweet someone doing you know some um, sex show thing that they didn't expect um, so that you know I don't, those things are going to go viral and, and get out there. I mean, just the way that, you know, on Twitter, people who spam are quickly blocked and, and gotten rid of. So, um, you know, I think that's, there's there's a bit of a shield, but, you know, once things scale, I mean, anything can happen. Now, what do we think about the idea of maybe having, like, pseudo-private meerkats, where the only people who can view and participate are people that you allow to follow or that you have selective sorts of meerkat, you know, selective live streams? What do we think about something like that? Because to me, Especially with the fact that this stuff isn't saved automatically, that seems like that could be actually really cool, would be to have kind of a pseudo-private Meerkat experience. What do you think of that? Yeah, I think it's probably on their plan now, um, if it wasn't a week ago. So, But uh, it's one of those things I would say is just it's, it sounds difficult to monetize that particular thing. Unless it is, again, as we kind of pitched, the Meerkat Pro oh. feature. So Meerkat if, Pro, yeah, I mean, I think that would be a great thing. I think people would pay for that, frankly. Totally, and I think, you know, Ben, if you're watching, feel free to steal this idea of uh, doing um, uh, a Meerkat Pro model where you'll get, one, you'll be able to save your Meerkats to the cloud, um, and two, maybe the ability to have private Meerkats, invite-only Meerkats. Ooh, that sounds nice, very exclusive. Um, and, uh, you know, probably, you know, other couple of, of features, maybe it's uh, groups or, or something. Um, yeah. You know, so, you know, meerkat for business or, you know. And, you know, when you do have those private meerkats, it does become, as we talked about earlier, you could have that Cisco WebEx thing, right. uh, which would make a ton of sense. I mean, you know, like I say, mainly because of the ease of use. I mean, you know, you the WebExes don't really work on mobile. And even if they do, they're complicated and you got to do a bunch of crap. So if uh, you just like, dude, let's just meerkat it, and that becomes the thing, then suddenly you're Dropbox, and you know you yeah. have a huge business, and you're in a hundred countries or whatever it is. So, um, yeah, I think uh, it's it's not bad. It's not bad if it's, and I think Meerkat Pro is is a great great model. I'm sure they're thinking about it. Yeah, and, and if you're not Ben, um, uh, give Pete and I two points each. Thanks so much. <laughs> uh, um, so you know what, we need to kind of wrap up here because uh, we've been going for a while. But one last question. This also comes from Robert Wood, and he goes, you know, would Meerkat develop um, a Mac app or a Windows app so that you could use a laptop um, uh, to stream? And, and what would this do to, to apps like you know FaceTime and Skype, etc.? Um, you know what? I don't know. I mean, I kind of I'd love to hear your thoughts, but my personal thought on this is that I think they could. But I feel like part of the brilliance of Meerkat is its mobile-first kind of philosophy. I feel like that's kind of what makes it so easy to do. I definitely do think that there is a market to have this, like, on a laptop or desktop, you know, on, on a Mac or, Mac or Windows. But I feel like the mobile aspect of this is really what kind of makes this feel so in the moment and is making this really sticky. Uh, I think with most of these services, if they are successful enough on mobile, there's always the possibility to bring it to desktop. But I don't know if that's something they need to – for, for, if it were me – I would be putting my resources in an Android app way before I would be putting it in a desktop app. What do you think, Pete? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much on board with you. On the, uh, but, uh, yeah, it's on. it should be on the roadmap. And we've seen this yeah. before with a bunch of apps, like Viber. Viber was pretty much mo yeah. maybe, um, uh, pretty much exclusively mobile, and then they came out with their desktop app, I think it was about a year and a half ago now. And it's very good. Um, the problem is, um, the I, like, what people tend to minimize the, issue of kind of coordinating all these different apps and all these different platforms, particularly when we're one, you're one user using them all to making sure your notifications are doubled up and all these kind of things. So um, that's not the easiest technical thing to do. And, you know, I mean, yeah, it's been solved to a large degree, but you still need to do the, the grunt work of, of coding and making sure everything um, works seamlessly because a browser user experience will, will, will kill you. Um, right. So, that, uh, you know, as since Meerkat, Meerkat is very small and very young, I'm sure they're like a year out, you know, a year and a half out, they're going to maybe probably add something like that. But for now, um, the mobile aspect is its strongest feature, uh, you know, because, you, you know, we, we saw it at the Mash Bash. Uh, Pete was doing his 
uh, broadcast and uh, joined by people waiting in line outside. So, you know, because right. they were, what are they doing? They're on their phones and they're, they're oh, Mashable is actually broadcasting live from the party that we're in line for. Um, you know, and so you, you're, it's that thing. It's like, you know, everyone, you're waiting in line, you're doing something. Meerkat gives you something interesting to look at that um, you probably are, in, uh, uh, from people you are already interested in, um, and you, it, 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 one touch, boom, on, in the stream. Uh, so, you know, it's just smart, it's simple, um, and that's, you know, what's strongest asset. So, you know, desktop, sure, not right now. Yep. Well, on that, right now. It, cloud sorry, go on. it would just cloud the mess. Yeah, cloud. That's all. It yes. Is. You know, so it's like right now, it's easy. It's in your pocket, and that's that's how they should keep it. Agreed. Agreed. Well, you know what? On that note, um, we thank you all for joining us both on Meerkat and on Google uh, Hangouts. Uh, we're going to go ahead and end the hand portion of the session. We might Meerkat for a few more minutes, but I want to thank P. Patchell for for joining me as always and for being my my Meerkat mo uh, yogi. And I have to say, you know what, P. I come around a little bit. I uh, I was pretty negative about Meerkat when we started things out, but um, you you convinced me to be more excited at least about this technology, if not the longevity of this particular service. I'd also like to Jake. Uh, I'd also like to thank J P Mangalan for uh, for joining us earlier in in the hangout uh, for talking to us about his thoughts and sharing some of the things he observed. Um, for the rest of you, let us know your thoughts on our blog post on Twitter on Meerkat in the Meerkat stream um, anywhere else. Um, we use the hashtag #MashTalk, and uh, we, we will be back next week with uh, more goodness. And um, we will be meerkatting at uh, at Mashable throughout the rest of uh, the ongoing foreseeable future because we're kind of obsessed with it, as as we can tell. Uh, Pete, you can follow him at Pete Patchell on uh, Twitter and on Meerkat. And uh, this guy, he loves his Meerkat, so be sure to follow Pete's stuff. Any final words, Pete? Yeah. Yes. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Meerkat. Keep it coming. Keep cat and keep mirroring. Okay, I've got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much.